as we've got here, and I believe we've got Caroline Verino against Alberto Conti. Yes, absolutely. So, so you got France against Italy here. Alberto Conti, one of the one of the more well-known players uh, in Italy, it's safe to say, has had quite a bit of success in the past. And uh, Carolina, also off the back of some recent success, we saw top 64 at the NAC and top 32 at Gdansk. So no slouch herself. Yeah, I mean Caroline there. I mean. Probably a player to start watching. Like, if you're going to do really, really well at multiple European regionals in a row, we are going to start paying attention. Now, Alberto Conti is a player a lot of people are going to recognize. We see a bunch of top cuts there in Lille, Liverpool, Lille again, apparently a big fan of Lille, <laughs> and EUIC as well, top 32, which is not an easy accomplishment not to make. All. So we have got a good a good pair of players, and we can say now they've got the headphones on. We've got your old favourite Iron uh, Valiant Ente against everyone's old favourite Giratina. Do, do you mean to say the deck I just demolished you in the castle battle with? I was hoping we couldn't mention that player <laughs> personally. I was, I was rather we could leave that in the past, but rather that than point out my out of date badge. <laughs> so what we're going to see here is an awful lot of tachyon bits. Mm -hmm. We're going to see an awful lot of Ente, and it's kind of the, the new school. Again the old guard. Ah, and very important to note here as well is playing that Spiritomb tech. This is something we talked about right at the beginning of the day. Can Iron Valiant adapt to overcome some of his more awkward matchups? Spiritomb, a great way to do that. It's not going to be great in this matchup. No, not in this. <laughs> no, no, not so much. I, uh... But you are correct. Against things like that, uh, Snorlax turning off the Rotom or Mew turning off Genesect, that Spiritomb becomes really quite useful. We can see the main cards on here. Give me a prediction, Freya. Who's winning this? I mean, it is a tough one, right? I think that because so I actually played this matchup a little bit with um, so my um, my good friend Charlie Bel Belfield, who's in the tournament, doing uh, quite well right now. Um, and there's a uh, plays a lot of Lost Giratina, so he played this matchup a lot. It really does depend on how the early game goes. Like if they can like get to a game state where they're mainly focusing on V Pokemon, not able to, not you know benching that many Comfays, it's pretty good for them because then they aren't really vulnerable to Yoga Loop. But if they're forced to put a bunch of Comfays out, then the attacking bits can come in, Yoga Loops start coming in, and then it's a bit tricky for the Iron Valley. And so it's something that can go very either way, very much. Uh, you might see the two Iono and Caroline's uh, the prizes there. She, she only plays two. <laughs> Both of her Iono, so Iono not going to be an option until we start taking some prizes. Everything else seems about right, although there is a path to the peak prize for the Giratina. Oh, and look at the appropriate sleeve. Oh, yeah, I like that. It, it's funny with sleeves like that because it could be like a bluff, a double bluff, right? It's like, <laughs> you know, am I playing these because I'm actually playing the deck or is it just uh, make you think I'm playing Giratina but I'm actually playing something else? But in this instance, no, it is just uh, going on theme. I have those sleeves. I will not be playing Giratina anytime soon. But Alberto does start off with the Comfe in the active and a battle VIP pass. Two things you absolutely want to be true when you're playing these Lost Zone decks. So we're going to be searching out any two basics. And you're right, it's his first couple of turns. Can you protect from Yoga Loop? Because that's the thing, right? Caroline's deck, you want to use Metachampi's Yoga Loop. And because you can drop damage counters with Tachyon bits, you can set that up quite early, and those Comfey are prime for Yoga Looping. Yeah, just so it's free tacking on bits, and a Yoga Loop will do the trick on a 70 HP Comfey, so Alberto's going to be mindful about benching anymore. I am. I would be shocked if you got another one off of this Battle VIP pass. I think uh, one's probably enough. It's such an awkward decision, because on the one hand, everything you said there was absolutely correct. On the other hand, I like drawing cards, and I want to get set up. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I do as well, but I mean, and, and you can see... You know, You've going, absolutely nailed like, it, Frey. You've absolutely nailed it. Like, it's, the key is two words, abyss-seeking. Yes. Because, like... It, it, the, because Abyss Seeking lets you, you know, dig through the deck and get more cards in the Lost Zone, and importantly, it lets you do that without getting too many Pokemon on the bench, which means Entei isn't doing as much damage, which means you're not at risk of a one-hit KO. Yeah, lowering your bench means you're not putting down those things which can be easily taken out with Tachyon Bits and Yoga Loop. You're also not powering up that Entei, you know, we saw in the caster battle earlier. I went wide early thinking it was a good idea. It was not a good idea. Entei, <laughs> I mean, all, all of the legendary beasts. And I know there's always a discussion. I checked this with Pokemon themselves. It is legendary beasts. It's not cats, it's not dogs, no. it's beasts. That's canon. But all of them have the same basic ability, the same basic attack and it really relies on your opponent having a large bench. Yes. So if you can have a small bench, that's a win. Yeah, oh, a little bit risky here, though. Alberto is actually going for another VIP pass, debating benching another Giratina and a Greninja. I think just a Greninja here is a bit better, I think, because, like, the more Pokemon you have on the bench, the less Tachyon bits that Caroline needs to get a KO on a Giratina with an Entei, so you definitely want to minimize that as much as possible.
Yeah, agree with you on that one. So we've got the two Giratina down. We've got the Greninja, obviously great for your draw power and does potentially threaten that attack as well. There are a couple of water energy in Alberto's deck, so it is absolutely possible. I, I have heard rumors of players playing one water energy just to make people think that they can attack with Raining Greninja to force a pointless Manaphy out. Yeah, it, it, like, it, it is something that you can do. Like for me personally, I think that having the option to actually make good on the threat is too good to pass up. It's something I wouldn't feel like ever <laughs> feel comfortable doing, doing myself, even though I can understand the reasoning behind it. Now, over the Carolines turn, actually a pretty decent hand. I've got one switch card, can get one Tachyon Bits going straight away, but a, a little bit unfortunate. There's a Forest Seal Stone, but no Pokemon V to attach it to. No, that is a big downside with your Forest Seal Stone. Has to be attached to a Pokemon V. Of course, generally speaking, you, you build a deck around Entei, and Metacham is a very big deal in the deck, so you've often got an option there. Uh, chooses to Professor's Research because there's just really nothing else going on in the hand. Oh, and then you draw things like Spiritomb, which yeah. we've already said is pointless in this matchup. Yeah. Actually, that hand is pretty awful. Like, no Pokemon search at all. So yeah, it's, that's not good. I'm yeah. agreeing with you, Freyr. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good hand at all. But, 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 but there is a Switch cart, so you can fire off another Tachyon Bits, and there is still a Squawk and Seize yet to use, so I'm sure Caroline's going to want to fight her off as soon as she can. Yeah, Squawk and Seize is such an awkward situation because on the one hand, it gets you six new cards, but on the other hand, it's, it's got to be turn one. So you lose all of that. And there are a couple of supporters there you might mm. want later on. Energy in the discard for the Magma Basin, great. Spiritum in the discard, brilliant. But there's a couple of supporters there you might want later, but if you don't use Squawk and Seize, you lose it. Actually, in this instance, the engine discard is a little bit awkward because there are already two in the opening hand that Carolina was able to get rid of, and now uh, she's discarded a third one, which means that finding a second one to actually attach to use in combination with the Magma Basin is going to be much harder to pull off. There are only five basic energy in the deck. That's an excellent point. So there's only two left in the deck now as it stands. And, uh, oh, very interesting. Carolina is not playing Jet Energy. So usually the kind of energy mix that we see in these decks, we see maybe five fire energies, a couple of double turbos and a couple of jet energy. Here it's just five fires and three double turbos, so no jet energy options to get the Entei into the active. Yeah, that is going to be super awkward. It's a lovely extra switching card, but obviously it also pays as well. One of the great things about Entei is it's a two-cost attacker, and you've got Magma Basin. So you accelerate an energy with Magma Basin, and then it's a colorless energy. So it could be a double turbo, but it could also be a jet energy. So you switch in while also being able to pay the cost. It, it's really quite lovely, but you're right. No jet energy, no option. There are escape rope in hand, though. Yeah, there is escape rope. So maybe you play one of those just to get one more attack on bits in. It's not ideal, but you know, maybe that's just the best thing you can do right now. Uh, you can set it up so that uh, next turn you can yoga loop the Comfey, for example, just uh, if you can find your Metacham and a double turbo energy. And maybe that's part of the reasoning why Carolyn is playing the, the third double turbo instead. Like, yoga loop is a very vital part of like pulling off the unfair turns in this deck. <laughs> so, you know, the, the more times you can do that, the, the better, really. Now, or maybe there's a chance for her from Fleet Footed to uh, one last dig for the energy. Can she find it? Energy on Fleet Footed would be huge. Oh, it's an escape rope. And there, you, you, you need, at some point, even in this deck, you need to stop <laughs> switching. All yeah. the Tachyon bits have been used. You've got the right Pokemon in the active, and it's, um, it's unfortunate. You're right, that energy of the Fleet Footed would have been huge. Did not work, unfortunately. The good news is, Caroline is set up really nicely for her turn, for next turn. And there's, there's a lot of options. I love when I'm playing against something like this. You know, I can yoga loot whenever I want. That Comfey's not leaving the board. That's not what Giratina decks do. No. Just sitting there ready to be yoga looped whenever you feel like it. Scoop up net has been rotated for quite a while now. So, yeah, <laughs> we know a risk of any of that damage being uh, healed off unless um, maybe if I'm able to find like a switch cart combination, get the company into the active and switch cart, that could be, that could come into it. But then Caroline can also just attack him bits one more time and then yoga loop and it's the same anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> you're right, it's an option, but it would really take a double switch cart and double switch cart on a Comfey. That just feels wrong. Yeah, so. Concealed cards, two more drawn there after a chorus experiment game rid of two jet energy, so Alberto clearly not interested in uh, <laughs> doing that this turn. Or it, might, it might be that there's already one in hand. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah there he is, okay, so that, that explains a lot there. Um, might be going for just like you say, just a slow, slower start this turn using that Abyss Seeking. Of course, it is a single colorless energy, so jet energy will work nicely. And just using that to get more cards in the Lost Zone, working towards having seven, because that's when your Mirage Gate turns on, and then you can start really going. And if you get those big Giratina V Star up, they're hard to take down. Yeah, they are. Now, it's like Mirage Gate hitting the Lost Zone there. So I believe, I'm not sure if there's, I think there should be one more off camera, right? There should be four in the Lost Zone now, right? I do believe. I'm going to just believe whatever it says there. 
I can't see well enough, I'm afraid. I can see three cars. I cannot see a fourth. There might be a fourth, but I cannot see it but right there was, now. There was a flower selecting turn one, a chorus is experiment, and another flower selecting now, so it should be four. And there should be four, yeah. yes. There should be four cards in the lost zone. Anyway, yeah, we've got that updated now, so yeah, that we, we, are, we are right. And yeah, there it is with the Abyss Seeking. Such a... I don't want to say underrated attack, because I think people now realize just how strong it actually is, but especially in a situation like this where you've limited your bench to like a good enough size where the attacking on bits, you, you have to do some effort to get the KO, and you just put this like, big big thing in the way that is going to be you know, hard to knock out whilst you're building more in the lost zone without putting down yoga loop targets. And if you can flower selecting plus Chorus's experiment plus Abyss Seeking, that's five cards in the lost zone in one turn. So next turn, it is not going to be difficult. You should be able to actually start going next turn. Mm -hmm. So if you can get a Mirage Gate and a Giratina V Star, you can start attacking and. Yeah, that was just a KO on the Comfey, it looks like, with Tachyon Bit. So, yeah. going the Yoga Loop for the moment. Yeah, I think uh, Caroline uh, realizing that at this point, it, with the hand that she had, there was no way to find a Yoga Loop combination that turn. She just got a Professor's Research off the prizes, which uh, now opens things up a little bit more. But I think she just wanted to take the knockout there and then in that instance, which is uh, completely fine. The only thing that does mean. And he's now doing 20 less damage. That's what I was just about to ask you. Is it worth keeping it there for the extra damage for the time being? There is certainly an argument to that regard. Um, I, I think it would be were not for the fact that your hand's completely dead. I think that was why she just wanted to uh, get something out of the prizes to have a chance at drawing more cards. So I think that's the otherwise, absolutely, it would have been better to keep it on board. And that is one important thing. When you've got nothing in your hand, every single card is so important. So here you're going to see the Entei go into the active, so you can use Fleet Footed. It's one extra card. What you really want to be doing is getting your Iron Valiant in the active and dropping some more damage counters. But right now you just need to draw a few extra cards, so you take your prize, you use your Fleet Footed, I think she actually already used Fleet Footed this turn. She's got the, the marker oh, on there. I think she, she used does. it before she switched. So um, It is just going to be an attack then. Yeah, Burning Rondo will be doing, with uh, six on the bench, she'll be doing 140 damage right now, I believe. Uh, so we've got six, yes. Yeah. yeah, six bench times 20 is 120, plus yep. the 20 base is 140. Matt's still with me. <laughs> Good <laughs> feeling, so... Yeah, 140, it's not ideal on the Giratina. It doesn't really put you in range for Tachyon Bits plus a Yoga Loop later on, but uh, it's yeah, but better than nothing, obviously. It's solid two-hit KO territory. Yeah, it is. Uh, You're not KOing with Tachyon Bits. You're not KOing with Yoga Loop, but you are KOing with your next Entei attack. Yeah. So another Chorus's experiment for Alberto. Cheney knows really, really well that will get uh, them to eight in the Lost Zone, which is, of course, uh, past that seven critical threshold for being able to do Mirage Gate. So we're going to be quite happy about that. It's a very interesting decision here, though. Let's see, there's another chorus experiment. There's a grass energy, a switch cart, and a, a, is that a counter catcher on the left as well that I see? Oh, I can't see well enough, I'm afraid, there. There's, it could be. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, th I think it's a counter catcher and a super. No, it's it's a jet energy and a super rod, I think. It's, well, I'm sure we'll see it in a little bit. Um, By the way, we need to get an energy and we need to get a mirage gate in order to get an attack coming off this turn. That's yes. what's going to be important. And that attack will. It's, it's awkward. The thing about Giratina V Star is, as an attacker, it asks a lot. It if does. If you've got 10 cards in the Lost Zone, which Alberto doesn't yet, then two energy KO, yay. Otherwise, it's free energy and you've got to Lost Zone two of them. So the good news is in this matchup it's probably going to be all right because let's face it, you're going after three two prize attackers. Yeah. So in theory, you use the first attack, you lost zone two, but that's fine. One energy next turn for Star Requiem, and then if you still got the same Giratina, attach the third. Yeah. So after that Chorus experiment, opting to get rid of the switch cart and the Chorus experiment, it makes sense in the sense that obviously switch carts are kind of useless to you right now. I can only switch out basic Pokemon, of which Giratina V Star is not. It so is not. so it makes sense to get rid of that. And the Chorus experiment, I guess. Uh, maybe I was thinking that's not the support I want to be playing next turn, so not much point keeping it. And uh, that very, very big hand going on right now. Yeah, and there is free energy on the Giratina. No, on the yep. Giratina V-Star. Looks yep. like we changed our mind with the Mirage Gate there. So as long as there is a Psychic Energy in hand, then of course you can just lost the impact for an easy KO, which I'm sure uh, Alberto would love to do. Concealed cards coming in now. Uh, discarding, yeah, there's got to be a Grass Energy, I imagine. Then drawing two, what does he find? Looking for that Psychic Energy if he doesn't already have it in hand. Oh, there is another Mirage Gate. There is a Psychic Energy in... Is that his hand? Uh, yeah, his hand is huge. Oh, he's got Psychic Energy in hand then, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got everything in hand. <laughs> his hand is huge! But there is at least a Psychic Energy to go and use that there. Yeah. And there's a, a Super Rod as well. That was one of the finds off the Chorus Experiment. Very important card, of course, to get back to those energies that you can seal cards away early so that you can Mirage Gate them later on. And, uh, yeah, going to just... Mirage Gate so you can get both the active... Uh, 
Giratina prepared as well as the bench one. Yeah, now we just need a psychic energy on the bench, which we know is in hand. That psychic energy came from a Mirage Gate. So that puts those two Giratina. And now you're absolutely fine. Essentially, you need one energy to close out this game. Those two Giratina, each are going to lose zone two energy. One's going to get KO. The other one will need a single energy attachment to use Star Requiem and then you're going to be fine. Because as soon as you attack now, that'll put you to 10 in the loss zone. Yeah, which is why, Alberto, the other reason why it wasn't as important to keep the Corusel experiment, because with this attack, you're already at that, uh, the, the other critical threshold being 10 to make the Star Requiem active. A really nice play from Alberto here, of course. You need to loss zone 2 energy, but they don't need to be from the Giratina V-Star with which you're attacking. Get rid of one on each, just in case Caroline is able to go towards a big KO on that Giratina V-Star. It means that Alberto can use that Star Requiem next turn. So really like the play there, hedging your bets, keeping your energy a bit separate. So no matter what Caroline KOs, you still got your attack next turn. Yeah, now that was a very, very big Professor's research regarding two Magma Basins, really uh, not ideal. Uh, if you get past the peak later on, which the Giratine deck tends to do, that could spell trouble for uh, uh, Carolina at this point. But needing to draw more cards, just deciding that it was, uh, that it was necessary at that point. And does find the Radiant Charizard, which is a very good pickup. Yeah, that's a very nice attacker. It's getting towards very cheap territory. 250 for, at the moment, free energy, which is actually slightly awkward because it means Magma Base and Attach won't quite do it. But it will with your double, double turbo. turbo. Exactly, which I think uh, Caroline does have in hand. So it's going to be a matter of whether she thinks it makes sense to do that at this point, because you could also just uh, power up Diente and attack with that, but maybe you want to try and go for the Force of Single Prize KO at this point. I know, I, I like using the Entei here. The Charizard is an easy 250, so that's two Tachyon bits and a Charizard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to use double turbo, because then that makes you use an extra Tachyon bits on the Charizard. So I, I like saving the Charizard to KO the next one. And actually, the way Carolina's going here, both these two Garatina V-Star could be KO'd on consecutive turns. Oh, that's true. And then Alberto hasn't won the game yet. No, that's uh, that's, actually, that's absolutely huge. So, and uh, now the, with the, the two-hit KO sort of becoming very important, right? Because now Caroline set this up nicely, and yeah, with the sort of Tachyon bits, it doesn't matter how much Alberto has on the bench or not. The Radiant Charizard can still, with the help from the Iron Valley, get the KO on the other one. That's why I love the Charizard, but I don't love it this turn. I think Caroline is playing this absolutely perfectly. And Ente takes a big KO, and this is where it gets awkward. Alberto's got the return KO. Literally, can just say Star Requiem, boom, KO. Jobs are good. The problem is, Carolina then needs an energy, because then Alberto's down to two prizes remaining, Charizard's single energy, but all oh, the Magma Basin's in place, so you don't even need the energy, and then you just need two Tachyon bits, and that's the KO, and then Alberto's left with a Radiant Greninja. This is the downside of keeping your bench so small, at some point you might need another attacker and Alberto really needs to start building up another attacker here. This is why it's vital for this turn that Alberto can find the combination of Roxanne and Path to the Peak. That's going to be you know, that yes. two card combination will put uh, is what he needs to put Carolina maybe behind enough to not be able to pull off that insane comeback knockout turn and uh, Carolina's hand side is way too big right now so yeah, I, I think the, we saw the paths were all in deck still, but the Roxanne is in Alberto's hand, so he might just like, go for the Roxanne here and just try to find the pass and peek off of that. I don't mind that play at all. And yeah, I mean, did, did we see Carolina discard the, the Magma Basin? Did they go in and discard? Well, what, they, did they, she they, hold they, it? Well, um, two of them got researched away. That's what I'm saying. So they did yeah, end yeah. up getting discarded. Yeah, yeah. Well, a path to the peak here is going to be huge because the chances of Caroline drawing out of it are frankly not high. Like, she plays the full four copies, obviously. But she does need to find that last copy, yeah. Exactly. There's only one copy left in the deck, and if a Roxanne comes down, that's going to be very, very annoying. So, yeah, that's that's what we're looking for here. That would be yeah. wonderful. Wait. Oh, wait. No, sorry, I'm wrong. The path's in hand. Oh, the path is in hand. So, yeah, so that is absolutely huge. That was the number one thing Alberto needed. There's the Roxanne as well. Roxanne path is a brutal combination at this stage of the game. And, and Caroline, look, you don't need much, but you need your last stadium, and that is going to be a big deal. The path of the peak turns off Tachyon bit, also turns off Charizard's ability. So you are going to need, well, either five energy or that last stadium. And you pointed out, Freya, right at that time, those Magma Basin getting discarded could be a problem. Yeah, it's now a problem. Yeah, it's a very, very big problem. Only two cards now for uh, Carolyn. And oh, does find the Lost Vacuum, though. <laughs> oh, let's... I mean, you still need the Basin, ideally, but at least you have access to something to get rid of the path, which is pretty huge by itself. So 
There is Star Requiem, gets a knockout on Yente. Lost vacuum hand for, uh, for Kalino, but what does she bring up now? I mean, yeah, you, you, the, the Magma Basin isn't too huge if you've got an energy. Uh, no, it needs to be a fire energy. Yeah. That won't do. What, what's she got in hand? It's a Nest Ball, a Vacuum, and a Double Turbo Energy. Yeah, Carolina needs cards. Yes. Like, she needs switching cards in order to use Tachyon Bit. She needs an energy for Charizard. She doesn't have any of that right now. Now, no, like, I, I don't think this game might be as um, it might just be over at this point i think it's over because alberto needs a basic energy to get the ko with giratina at this stage so we see an ente coming out and can she even get it into the active to use fleet footed you can retreat with the double turbo energy like it, but that's that's then you force you i mean don't get me wrong it's it's got to be done but i'm saying doing this forces you then into needing the magma basin because that's the only way to get an energy on the charizard and she's just gone for a single prizer in the active energy and any gusting here will end the game for alberto boss's orders and an energy would be ideal obviously counter catchers not online because alberto is winning the game so, and there's no rope, and even rope would be super awkward at this point because you need another switch. So, yeah, it's boss energy. Boss energy wins the game. But even if not, Carolina's not in a great position and needs at least two turns to finish out this game. Yeah, really not a great position to be in. So there's another course of experiments. Maybe if you can find the, rope, the switch cart rope combination, that would still work. Obviously, even though that makes it a little bit awkward. I see a switch cart. I don't see a rope, though. There's no rope in the deck. There's no oh. rope here. So rope is not going to be the answer, I'm afraid. It's got to be a boss's orders or and an energy. That is that is it where we are at the moment. I think I saw an energy, but I don't think there's a boss. And frankly, I don't want to KO that Charizard. No, no, I don't not really. have, If I'm Alberto, I don't have enough energy. So... Oh, there is a Mirage Gate. Okay, I might have enough energy. I still don't really want to KO it, though. You, you don't even really want to give up two of your energies to KO one prize, all right? It, 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 you might just have to in this instance, but you want to make sure that you have enough energy to finish out the game. And if you do this, maybe you just don't. And then, but then you make yourself more vulnerable to Iono if Carolina plays it, which she very well might. It, it's too. Now, we do see, so we clearly Alberto saying, no, no, I'm going to attack twice in a row. We're good. We do see the attack onto the Charizard. Alberto goes to one prize remaining. And I, I guess the thing here that this does mean is that this Giratina is never threatened about being KO'd now, right now because the Radiant Charizard was the only way you could really do that. So, yes. yeah, it is going to be Vacuum and then Fleet Footed for Professor's Research. Oh, Ooh. my God. Okay, now I'm glad we got rid of the Charizard. Because <laughs> <laughs> that one could have been... Um, I liked leaving an awkward retreater in the active while I waited, but no, getting rid of it, going down to one prize remaining. And it's still not perfect. We do see the Magma Basin here, though, and... Oh, no, there's a switch and a switch. I think she might have actually had it, you know. Yeah, and but... yes, there's also... Oh. There is a um, there's a Future Booster Energy Capsule. So, actually, I think, had you not KO'd the Charizard there, I think the Charizard would have got the return KO. Yeah, I think so as well. But the problem is, like, these anti-valiant lists, and this one's no exception, don't really tend to play recovery cards. You know, they tend to, they tend to just, like, go through and do what they do, and sort of uh, recovery is not the name of the game. And I think this list is, uh, from what I've seen, is no exception. So there's no way to get that Charizard back. Um, yeah, I'm looking, I'm having a look here, Freya. I'm not seeing any recovery here at all. So, no, that Charizard, he gone, unfortunately. So, now... Well, it has to be... It's a Yoga Luke on a Comfe. We're, we're going Yoga Luke. Yes. There's three, there's three Iron Valiant down, bunch of switching cards. We're going Yoga Loop here. Yeah, so, it's, really, it's attacking on bits. Attacking on bits. The double turbo's in hand. There's a future boost energy capsule. So that will go nicely. Are we one switch away? I think, yeah, I think Car uh, Carolina might be a little bit short. I only saw the future booster energy capture. You need that plus one more switching out. And we've got the oh. energy. Oh, we're going to be one damage counter away from a yoga loop here. So it looks like we're going in and attacking with the end. Uh, yeah, it's not what you wanted here, but no. it had to be done. And we know that this means the game is over because Alberto has the energy in hand. So all he has to do is attach, announce Lost Impact, and we will be going on to game two. There's so. the energy, there's a Lost Impact, and we are going to <laughs> game two. Alberto Conti goes up one game to zero, and Carolina there, very nice play, just a little bit too short. And Alberto's going, yeah, no, it turns out the Giratina thing we all thought was good.
Yeah, it's been good all the way along. Yeah. Worth pointing out, we are in round six here. Winner of this will be 6-0. and oh, Means they need one tie from the last three games. At some point, they're probably going to get an intentional draw. So this isn't technically a win and in, but this is a win and in yeah. for day two. It's, a, it's an as good as, right? And uh, yeah, let, and that, to be fair as well, like that game, really the key turn was just the path rock sand, right? That, yes, that, was, that, was the, that was the turnaround turn. So up until that point, uh, it's... It could have gone either way, but it was pretty clear that yeah, Caroline was in a very, very good position to sort of take control of it. But the Path Rock Santa just changed actually everything. And this is one of the biggest strengths of the Giratina deck. Like, it's one of those decks that does tend to we were playing to do is like comeback mechanics that we've talked into, talked about before, especially considering with the counter catcher that's come into the list recently. So, yeah, this is like doing exactly what it was meant to do just get, go to the free prizes, rock sand your opponent, and make them miss. And that's that's what happened. It worked out nicely. I mean, Judge Path has been a thing for a while, Rock Sand Path, Iono Path, it's all the same kind of deal give your opponent a very low hand size while also turning off their abilities in decks where abilities really are important. And we saw that, you know, with, with no Tachyon bits, with no Charizard on board, and, you know, there was a question as to whether Alberto had enough energy to KO the Charizard, and the next thing that came up, oh, yeah, no, easily. Easily enough easily. energy to do that, and that was a big turning point in the game. Had he been a little bit shy there, maybe Carolina's able to get the KO with Charizard and work the way back in. But no, unfortunately, plenty of energy for Alberto. Not worrying about that. And, well, that's game one. That's yeah, game one. So I think like it was a mulligan from Alberto for the, in the first instance, but uh, finding a basic this time. Quite an interesting hand that Alberto has going for him right now. As you can see a couple of paths to the peak and a few other things. We do see the, the prizes coming out now as well. And, uh, oh, very key there for Caroline. That, uh, that Medicham V is prize Ooh. as well as a Squawker Billy, but... Kalina is obviously to play two score instead of one, so having the one prize, not the end of the world. No, you play two just in case one is prized because you need it so much in the early game, but that one Medicham being prized is a big deal. And Alberto's prized two Battle VIP pass, which means it's much diff more difficult to find turn one. And then your first two prizes you pull are going to be pointless cards you literally aren't able to play. So that's going to be a little bit annoying. So it looks like we do see Alberto going first here. Of course, that means Carolina has chosen to go second. And, I mean, Frey, you, you play a bunch of Iron Valley. And tell us why going second's a big deal. So it's a couple of things. It's the fact that you can play your own supporter going, going first so that you can like, dig through more of your deck and uh, do more of your combo. But it's also the fact that it because your opponent is going first, they can't play a supporter. So in a way... It kind of increases your chance for a donk in a way, yeah. way. It's because it's a bit counterintuitive, but it, it your opponent, they, even though, yeah, they're going first, they, they can get their Pokemon out first. They're just a little bit less likely to hit all the stuff they need because they don't have a supporter going. So that, that's usually why you tend to want to go second to Iron Valiant. Yep, donk is that term we use for KOing your opponent's only Pokemon on your first turn. So you essentially take out their only Pokemon and win straight away. Of course, you've got Entei there. It's a two energy attacker, but you have Magma Basin. So you can get that going in one turn. So you can basically, you don't need a turn. Some decks need a turn to evolve or need a turn to attack extra energy. Iron Valiant Entei doesn't. Everything you want to do is actually on the board from your first turn. So going second, giving your opponent a turn without a supporter can actually really work. Yeah, really, really can. Now, Alberto starting off with a Nest Ball, yeah, going to find a Giratina straight away. Must be going to be a little bit sad about starting with the Sableye. That is not yep. a very easy Yoga Loop target, and it's a Yoga Loop target that doesn't even help get you towards more in the Lost Zone. <laughs> nope. And, and Alberto's having to bench another Comfey, or, or another low HP Pokemon as well, being com a Comfey. Not really ideal. No, and of course, we know that Carolina's uh, your yoga looping Metacham is prized. Alberto doesn't. Now, we do see an early path here. That's kind of a big deal. Turn one path against this Iron Valiant deck can be amazing because it means that those Tachyon bits just aren't coming out in the early game. There's no option there until you get rid of it, and that means finding your stadium or finding your lost vacuum. So, yeah, that's, that's quite nice. Yes. It's uh, important to note as well, uh, Carolina is not playing Hisuian Heavy Ball. This is uh, an option that we've seen some Iron Valiant lists use. You could maybe use that, you know, to get the better champ out of the prizes, but not in this instance. So, yeah, that Medicham's going to be stuck there until Carolina can start taking some KOs. That is a little bit awkward, of course. We see these decks playing these one-off basic Pokemon, and then how Hisuian Heavy Ball is so important to make sure that you're not locked out of the game. It's a risk that you take. It's a risk that doesn't always pay off. So we do see Battle VIP pass here for two Iron Valiant, which is, of course, absolutely standard standard, especially when you've got an Entei out. But we're going to need to find some way to get rid of that stadium if we're going to start seeing Tachyon bits dropping some damage. 
Yeah, and I don't think there's no Magma Basin in hand currently, but maybe this Chorus experiment can find one. So, you're going to look at the top five and uh, really need to find a stadium here. Or Lost Vacuum just to get rid of it as well would work. What? Did, oh, oh, there it is! Yeah, Lost Vacuum's big. And of course, there's a fleet footed, can be used for Mente, but not until that path. But the peak goes away. So, using Lost Vacuum is a very nice way to get rid of it. It's not perfect. You'd like to have your own stadium. But you know what? If it gets rid of path to the peak, that'll do very nicely. Oh no, it looks like we've seen Squawkabilly going into the loss zone here, which means no turn one Squawk and Seize. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a little surprising, I think, because... Have they checked the deck yet? Does she know that no. it's priced? No, no she, no, she hasn't had a chance to. Because that might... Oh no, she has with the pass VIP pass. Yeah, so she's used okay. the VIP pass. So this is the, this is a conscious decision, all right? This is saying I don't need or I don't want to squawk and seize. I don't want to discard my hand or I don't want to put this liability down. Whatever the reason is, I am choosing not to use it here. Yeah. Oh, and that is a lot of energy in hand now. Two fires already in hand. I'm finding another one off the fleet footed. That's three out of five. Yep. So there goes the escape rope. Going to go into the Iron Valiant attacking bit straight away. Uh, going to go for that Comfey. So yep. we want used. Well, it's like you said, the Sableye doesn't do anything, the Comfey does, so that is yep. going to be the target. And then it's going to be switch cart and tacking bits again, and then maybe just... Oh, no, switch cart into the Entei, fleet-footed a second time. Love double fleet-footed. Oh, it's a Magma Basin. Now, is there an energy in the discard? Uh, no, there isn't. Oh, that's so annoying. Everything else for the turn one KO, but no energy in the discard. Yeah. Means that Carolina has to pass back to Alberto. But that makes it very interesting about the conscious decisions not squawk ability, because there's no draw option in Caroline's hand. So I, like the only reason why she could have done that is that she essentially decided, I don't want to discard all this in my hand right now. It's too valuable. Absolutely, and we, you know, things like the Magma Basin, we see it's being held. It's being held as an answer to Path to the Peak, because well, Path to the Peak really hurt last game. So, and one of the things that happened was she discarded two of them. Yes. And then that became a really big problem. So, and we sometimes do see players kind of reacting to that. Game one, you discard a couple of stadium and it really comes back to bite you. So game two, you're like, <laughs> I'm not falling for that again. But then do you sometimes go a bit too far the other way? Could Squawk and Seize have been the answer? The answer is, I don't know. We'll have to wait a couple of turns, see how the game shakes out. I guess uh, uh, Kalyan is thinking that she can get by enough just on the fleet footers for now. And that, yeah, sort of mentioned that Squawk ability was too much of an easy prize liability, but either way, it's going to be up to Alberto to see what kind of response he can mount. There is a jet energy ready in the hand that he could use to go for an Abyss Seeking, but it looks like he's considering actually putting it onto the Comfey instead and just going to go for another Flower Selecting. Yeah, I like this. If we see an Abyss Seeking as well, we're going to be up to seven cards in the Lost Zone now, so this turn is not going to be the Explosive turn. It's not no. happening. But next turn absolutely could be. We don't even need Abyss Seeking. We could just see a Chorus's Experiment next turn. That would also put him up to seven. Yeah, I mean, point. It, 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 you go, sorry, go on. I was going to say, the point is, next turn's going to be big. Yeah. So, yeah, there was no good seeking option that turn, of course, because the jet energy was the attachment for turn onto oh, the, onto the Comfe, so... It's be sad. That is never going to happen. But here's another fleet-footed switch cart. Not really what uh, Caroline wants here. Uh, like I say, you don't need the Abyss Seeking, which is a good thing. Instead, we got an energy onto the Entei, and... It's a slow start for Carolina here. It's not really what you want. We've had one Tachyon Bits, and actually, if, if this goes like it's looking at the moment, Entei KOs the Comfey, and that Tachyon Bits was completely irrelevant anyway. There's, there's no extra damage, and all oh, that feels bad when you've had one Tachyon Bits in two turns, and it did nothing of value. Yeah, and uh, look from the prize as well. Carolina actually got the other Squawk ability. Oh, no! <laughs> that is not what you want. That is a useless card at this stage, and not going to be used the attack the ability can only be used on your first turn of the game and you've not got much draw and now all of a sudden you've drawn a completely useless card off of your prizes i know carolina's up one prize to zero but it really does seem like if alberto's got a chorus's experiment this turn and goes up to seven in the lost zone yeah, th this is going to be big. Yeah, it's weird because Alberto's start looks slow, but in reality, he's on, to seven, on to seven in the Lost Zone now. Like, he doesn't need anything else. He, like, if, as long as he can get to this point where he can start uh, firing off these Lost Impacts, so things are going to get very dicey very quickly for Carolina. I mean, we're looking for a free card combo here. We're looking for any kind of energy, a Giratina V-Star, and a Mirage Gate. There's the Mirage Gate. That's one of the free parts. And, I mean, to be honest, you can start attacking with a Giratina. The problem is it doesn't actually KO the Entei. So I, I still want to see the V-Star. And like we saw last game, yes, you have to bin some energy in the Lost Zone, 
but you've got enough energy. You're only taking three KOs this game. So energy, Giratina V-Star. And if Alberto can get that this turn, he's going to be in a phenomenal position. Yeah, and I think, I don't know if I saw it, saw it wrong, but I'm fairly sure I saw him get, yeah, some Giratina V-Stars from that Chorus experiment. So oh, yeah, that's there's a jet, energy. jet energy as well. So that's everything. Yeah. That's the entire combo. Now we're going to see the KO on the Entei to go up by a prize. A second Giratina being benched is really big. Oh, establishing a path to the peak as well. This is everything Alberto wants. This is basically the perfect turn. Yeah, this is about as good as it could get for Alberto. And uh, I think the one good thing for uh, Kalina here is that she does have access to the Magma Basin in hand, so it already has like the path to the peak counter ready to go, um, which is going to be very important. Now, opting to put the Entei into the active, needing that extra draw from the fleet footed, even though that you think that'll be counterintuitive, but uh, in this instance, yeah, you just need that extra draw first. So let's see what she finds off of it. Oh, an escape rope, which again, that's just not really doing it for her at this point. No, I mean, it's, it's so awkward. What, the ideal situation, what you really want to do here is yoga loop. You want treble tacky on bits plus your yoga loop, and then you're going to be able to take out that saber, like get an extra turn and get some damage onto Giratina at the same time. The problem is your Metacham is prized. You only have two tacky on bits to work with. So instead, we're trying to work towards a KO on the V star. But Alberto's done a phenomenal job keeping his bench nice and low. There are two bench Pokemon there. That means, as it stands at the moment, if my maths holds up, Entei's doing 100. Yeah, which That's is not, not enough. Even if you mention Squawk ability, you're doing 120. It's just really not going to get you there. And uh, in this instance, a switch cart back into the Entei, uh, attaching in, uh, to the active. It looks like Alberto did bring up the Stabilize, so I guess I could at least can get a KO on that. But I mean, as long as Alberto has another Mirage Gate, it's just going to be another return KO, and then Alberto's going to be way too far ahead for Carolina to catch up. I mean, this helps the prize map kind of for Carolina, because now at least she KOs those two Giratina and she's good, she's done. But honestly here, it really feels like, I'll, you know, if Alberto gets a KO here, the game's as good as over, because you're then going to be ahead by two prizes, and Carolina's going to really struggle to KO these Giratina V-Star. That's the problem. The prizes she's taken have, have been on a Comfey and a Sableye. Those are not good enough prizes here. Now, we do need one more card in the Lost Zone, and I really want to see one more card in the Lost Zone here. This is a good Star Requiem turn. And then next turn, you finish off with a big attack. Yeah, it is a good Star Requiem turn, but I think at this point, Alberto, so, it, he's so far ahead, it doesn't almost matter, right? He actually just decides to abyss seeking this turn, and I think that's completely fine. I don't think you need to do anything else. I don't mind this at all. I think you can, you can give up. Eventually, you're just giving up a turn. But you're now up to 10 in the Lost Zone, and in theory here, all you need is a couple of energy, and you're, you're figuring out this game. Carolina's not really threatening a KO. There is a path to the peak, which has been established here. So that means that all those Tachyon bits aren't actually on the field at the moment. A potential Charizard KO is not coming out. It's just, yeah. What do you even do if you're a Carolina here? There's, uh, like, now 11 in the Lost Zone. There's, oh, it looks like there's a Forest Seal Stone drawn for, drawn for turn. I mean, your Forest Seal Stone for a stadium, if you really don't have one. Honestly, I'm working towards Char. I mean, Charizard would actually KO the Giratina V here. That would be a KO for two prizes. It's, it's got fewer than 250, even with a double turbo. So what you could essentially do here is Magma Basin, double turbo onto a Charizard, and then that would, well, it would do exactly 230. You only need to do 220 you're good. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying it keeps you in the prize race. And then maybe you can have a big turn and KO the Giratina Beast on next turn. Mm. But if I'm Alberto, I'm just like, ha, I've got no bench now. Now what? Yeah, and also not only that, but uh, there are some good cards off of that uh, research, but not quite enough. There's a Magma Basin, which is obviously... I mean, to sniff out, but no way to access Radiant Charizard, unfortunately. So it's going to have to be on the Fleet Footed. Oh, he finds a Nest Ball on the Fleet Footed! <laughs> That's kind of nice. But we, I mean, there's still a lot we need at this stage. We still, well, I don't suppose we don't need a switch out. We can, no, we do need a switch out. Entei's got a retreat cost of three. Yes. I always forget that. that you've seen it's like Raikou with a much lower retreat cost. So we need basically a switch out and a double turbo. Yes, there was a double turbo in the last hand. Unfortunately, they had to get researched away. I'm not sure if I saw another one in Carolina's hand. If she has one, this could be an insane comeback turn. But if not, then we'll have to wait and see. Uh, no, I don't see one. There's a Corazid experiment. Have we seen a supporter? Oh, what, she just researched. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to... Okay, Fran, I'm, just, I'm trying to be optimistic <laughs> here, all right? But yes, I know she just researched. So, um, yeah. Now, we do have an escape rope. You don't want an... Oh, do you want an escape rope? Mm, I don't know if you want an escape rope here. 
It's, I, mean, I think it's fine, right? I mean, you, mm. I think maybe just trying to build up some more damage counters so that suppose you can... I suppose you can always finish with Tachyon Bits. Yeah, yeah, you can. That's what but... we were talking about before we went live a minute ago. Tachyon Bits is actually, sometimes even if you don't completely KO, it's not the end of the world. So there is a Tachyon Bits onto the bench. We now see the retreat into the Entei. Oh, it looks like the Charizard, not an option this turn. That would have been a nope. huge swing in the game. It's not an option. So instead, we just see an attack with the Entei. It's going to do a uh, hun yeah, hundred. Yeah. Burning Rondo for a hundred. Not really the kind of numbers you want to be doing with Entei, in all honesty, but it's all there. Uh, Carolyn can master at this point, unfortunately. Not able to find that double turbo to pull off the insane comeback turn KO. And nothing's, nothing's in Tachyon Bits range, and that's no. my problem here. It means Carolina needs to attack two more times in order to win the game, because Tachyon Bits is not going to finish off either of these Pokémon. They're both way too far away. Yeah. So what that essentially means is you need to attack two times, so you need to hope Alberto goes one of these turns without taking a KO. Well... You need a Mirage Gate and a Basic Energy and a Giratina V-Star. Those three cards guarantees attacks the next two turns and essentially checkmates, guarantees the game. Mirage Gate onto the active, evolve the active into a V-Star, and then attach for turn. If you can pull off those three, you're good. Now, there is the Mirage Gate, so we need a V-Star and we need an Energy. Yeah, specifically a Psychic Energy, which... Interestingly enough, there were no Psychic Energies left in the deck, so unless there's one in hand, then it might be a little bit tricky, but I'll bet there is, okay, they're, they're both yeah. in hand already. So. You attach that to the bench, because the active is already, oh, okay, that's it. I'm pretty sure Alberto's got what he needs. Choosing to put the Psychic onto the active here, which would mean you need a Psychic Energy next turn if that goes down, which it is going to go down. The Charizard's going to KO here. Now there's the path to the peak, forcing a response for the Charizard to KO. Why did Albert? Is he put four? There's four energy on that one. Yeah, but you need psychic for the attack cost. Oh, I didn't. Yes, it was a jet <laughs> energy. Okay, so that's why we got the extra energy. <laughs> so we either need to survive and get an energy, or we need a psychic on the bench. Either of those two will guarantee to win next turn, depending on what Carolina does here. Yeah. If Carolina can, this would be the ideal turn to Iono. You need to Iono here to they put uh, Alberto down to lower hand size, and then pray that Alberto isn't able to find another psychic energy. No, there's a Chorus' experiment in hand. There's no other supporter, and I don't really see a way to get a supporter. So it seems like, I mean, we can nest ball for a Spiritomb just to do more damage with a potential Entei and just to thin your deck a little bit before we Chorus' experiment. It's not, it's not really what you want. You no. need a Stadium. I guess what you can do is you can attack with the Radiant Charizard and hope that Alberta doesn't have a Gusting card as well. That would also work because if you would take KO here, you'd be 2-2. Two, two. Yes. So there would be no option for a counter catch. It would have to be a, be a boss's orders. Yeah, Charizard is absolutely the play here. Oh, I kind of like this. Yes. Because now it makes a return KO so much easier next turn. There's a professor's research. There was a research there. So we need a stadium in the worst way here. Yes, so he does find it. He's got the stadium. Yes. He's got the stadium. Okay. That's amazing. So Magma Basin, a huge find. There's now that excited heart ability is back online, and Roberto having taken four prize cards. This Charizard is attacking for just one fire energy. Yes, this is perfect. I love this. And now, like, every part of Carolina's turn makes sense here. Ending the turn with a single prizer to force Alberto to have Gusting. Taking out the less damaged Pokémon so that you've got an easier KO with something like an Entei on that more damaged V-Star. Yeah, I like that. I mean, Alberto can still win next turn, Freya, but this is going to get so much more difficult. It is. So, two prizes apiece. It's just going to come down to, does Alberto have the boss's orders to win the game? It's a sim It really is as simple as that. He's already got the energy. And, oh, that's a Roxanne. It's two Roxanne in hand. I'm not seeing a boss. Is there a... No, there's no boss. Like, Alberto would have slammed it, I'm sure. You like... would think so. There's two Roxanne and an Iono. So, if you're looking for hand disruption, you good. Uh, yeah. But that's not what we want right now. Oh, this is so awkward. And actually, I mean, you have to take out the Charizard here, but that means an Entei. Actually, another very important point we mentioned the Spiritomb. This uh, prevents Alberta from having escape rope as a win condition as well, because Carolina hasn't seen one yet, but she, she would probably make the assumption that most of the list would play one, right? She doesn't know that Alberta doesn't play it yet. So, it's, yeah. So it's, it's actually her way of playing around escape rope, even though in this instance it ends up it, it, like it, it's not going to matter. No, playing, uh, outplaying everything. So now we do see the Roxanne Alberto will not be winning the game this turn, people. We are going to see, I mean, presumably we're going to see a KO on the Charizard. What I do like here is the amount of energy. So Alberto's going, look, 
Next turn, I need nothing. I'm going to lose zone two energy. And next turn, I've got a Pokemon active that guarantees a KO on anything. And I'm down to one prize. Alberto will 100% win next turn. Can Carolina stop him? It's going to be very, very tough. It's going to be a matter of whether she can find the means to just KO back this Giratina, which is going to be difficult for sure. Now, Alberto didn't really get a good look at his hand, but it doesn't look like it was anything insanely useful. No pass at a peak, that would have been ideal. Yeah, just a lost impact. So now it's on Carolina. Two cards. Can she find the means to win? Entei Fire Energy. It's as simple as that. Um, oh, how much is it? So, oh, no, we need to do, we need to 180, actually. So Entei's That's quite still, a lot. Entei's still quite far away. Yeah, and wait, is there no Entei left? Oh, I'm talking about Entei here. <laughs> um, oh, dear. Oh, the last one's prize. That's why. Oh, the last Entei is prize. Good shout, Freya. I was not looking at the prize cam just then. We, we do have the prize cam here at all times. I should have checked that earlier. But I don't know. I mean, Entei actually has oh. got to stretch right now. Entei needs to do 180 to get the KO. And I like everything Carolina did last turn. But this, this is when you need your Charizard. And there is no recovery. That Charizard's not coming back. No, no, no. That's it. And Carolina extends a hand with the fist bump with the last Entei prize. Not able to do an attack. So that is going to be Alberto taking the win 2-0 here in this round six. Yeah, Alberto takes it 2-0. That Iron Valley and deck. I wasn't able to take it down earlier. But Alberto is here. And that was a very, very well played game. And I've got to point out the play of Alberto here. All game, both games, it's was superb we saw keeping the bench nice and small we saw you know the energy one of the things about this giratina deck which we pointed out it can be super awkward with the energy especially when you have to keep lost zoning a couple to attack so we saw piling the energy on we saw loss zoning from particular Pokemon, always making sure that Alberto had that extra attack ready to go later on in the game. It was so 